Most students know, and especially medical students, that the most efficient way to learn content is to use active recall and spaced repetition, rather than kind of rereading and, and highlighting. But it can seem a bit scary at first when everyone's talking about Anki and Anki settings and flashcards, and sometimes you just think, you know, maybe I'm just better off sticking with highlighting and, and rereading. Honestly, that's how I felt initially too, but in this video, I'd like to share five pretty simple methods to get started with active recall for studying. Um, and I'm including flashcards in this, but I'm talking about a lot more uh, than just flashcards, so definitely stay tuned. Now, I'm not going to pretend that these are some revolutionary active recall methods. I mean, absolutely not. M most of the ones I'm going to talk through are really, really simple. Um, but I think, you know, I just wanted to make this video to share, you know, what's worked for me, and maybe it will help uh, some other students out. So let's get started with the first one, cover up method. Um, and it's probably the easiest way to get started with doing active recall. So all this involves is just doing a first pass of your notes to make sure that you've really understood everything really well. If there's any images, just cover up the labels with squares in Word or something. And then when you come back to do it the second time, you know, you don't see any of the labels and you can go line by line to kind of preempt the answer before you scroll. So um, I'll give you guys an example of this. I've just got a really simple, like a made up set of notes here. So don't pay too much attention to the actual content, um, but it's just on anemia. So this is kind of how I'd do it. If I've already done a first pass, I would kind of just think, okay, well, the question is, the definition, that's the first heading. And so instead of just reading it, I would try and type out my guess in the split screen on the right, um, and then I would have a look, um, you know, in terms of hemoglobin and all that stuff. And then I'd read the definition. So it's active recall straight away. Um, you know, you could do that, you could do it again for mechanisms, for example. You know? Even better is if this were heading were like four mechanisms, that'd be better. You could see that. And then there's something called apparent anemia, and maybe I've forgotten what that is, and I, I'd need to recall that actively before I just scroll and read it. That'll help me retain it. So that's what it is. And then finally, we've got a blood film here, and you can see I've taken out the label um, so that I can think about what this is actually showing, then delete it to have a look, and then just Control Z or Command Z to get the label back. The disadvantage is really, it's a bit rudimentary in the sense that not all the content is gonna be under neat headings. Secondly, it relies on you having access to notes. Um, and also, there's no space repetition built in. To be fair, you could probably just make it up like, you know, one day, three days, seven days, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, you have to kind of keep track of it. Right, the second method I'd like to go through is Notion toggles. Now I admit, I've mainly started using that this year, but it's so good I thought I'd share it with you guys. It's basically the cover-up method, but more refined, because instead of having notes, you write yourself questions with toggle function. So I'll show you what that looks like here. This is just an example of like random uh, questions about the liver. But if we imagine that this is from a lecture, it's really great because I can see here, oh, 65 year old, this is the presentation, scratch marks, you know, what could it suggest? And I can click this to reveal the answer. So it's kind of like a flashcard. And then it leads us on nicely to the next question, which is what's a GI cancer that's an adenocarcinoma? Similarly, open this, open this. It's just really great. Um, doesn't rely on using kind of scrolling and stuff like the last one. Um, this also reduces the chance you'll accidentally see the answer. Um, but again, doesn't have space repetition built in. Um, but again, what's really great about it is that it kind of preserves the narrative of the lecture. So it, one thing leads on uh, from the other. This is a really great method. A lot of people have been using this. Um, yeah, loads of people have talked about it on their on their YouTube channels and everything. All right, this next one is PowerPoint Q&A. And I think honestly, it's really great for people who maybe don't want to make their own notes on Word. And if your lecture slides are given to you as handouts from your med school, um, it will work really, really well if those slides are well designed. So I use this method a lot in my first year especially. Actually. Um, so I'll give you guys an example of it. Let's say I was having a lecture on um, like rheumatology. I would attend the lecture, annotate any extra things that the lecture said into the slides. And then those slides would become a revision resource. And the way to use it would be something like this. I'd collapse the sidebar, sort of, and I'd know the next slide coming up by hovering over the thumbnail. So you can see the titles come up there, rheumatoid versus osteoarthritis. So I know that the next slide is gonna be talking about differences between those two. Um, and then using that, I can preempt the answer, you know, what are the differences? And before I move on to the next slide, super simple. A way you could make this even better is by having an actual slide beforehand, asking questions to yourself, you know, give three differences, which one's the more localized one, uh, which is the one that causes the most disability in the West. And then that really nicely leads me on to actually reading the slide. So much more will stick, um, and it did stick for me when I did it this way, rather than just flicking through slides page by page um, and just reading it passively. Again, this is really efficient, pretty rigorous, because you're not gonna see the answer until you move on. 
kind of relies on having a uh, good handout, so that, that's definitely true. Uh, and again, no space repetition inbuilt. But I just feel like this is a really good balance between sort of the traditional flashcards and just written notes. Okay, so of course I can't talk about Active Recall without mentioning Anki or Brainscape at least once. So the flashcard method, I'm sure most of you have heard about it. You basically make a bunch of cards for your lecture in question and answer format, and then go through uh, your software and click you know, show me the other side, and then you rate it based on whether you thought it was easy, hard, or you want to see it again. Now, to be honest, flashcards are an amazing way uh, to study. I've only started using Anki properly this year, um, but to be honest, there are certain times where flashcards haven't always worked for me. So if something is really conceptual, or as I said before, if you need, really need to see it in a certain order, sometimes the flashcards get a bit too fragmented, test you on little bits of knowledge from all over the course. Whereas sometimes I kind of just want um, to sequentially go through something. I wanna, I wanna keep the flow of the lecture. So it really depends. I think with stuff that's just kind of brute force memorization, like drug names and stuff, flashcards are amazing um, and you should start them nice and early. But maybe for some other subjects, just see what works for you. Number one most important thing though is if you're gonna start using Anki, make sure you use it right. So there's loads of YouTube videos online um, that can help you with that. And uh, I might do a video on it myself in the future, but there's just so many good ones already. Another really important thing is to understand the content before you use the flashcards. They're only meant to be used to help you commit stuff to memory, not really to understand it. And finally, practice questions. So of course the popular belief is that, you know, questions are used for consolidation and I won't touch the questions until I've read through everything four times. But actually, um, at least I found when I've been doing the questions, just even after having only read the content once and then going back to the text and cross-referencing, it really helps things stick. And sometimes I find it's more motivating because it's kind of like, oh, this is an actual like exam style question, you know, better start learning around this rather than kind of uh, just reading through everything um, without knowing what's gonna be asked. So of course you have to be careful uh, that you're not only relying on questions because you're gonna leave gaps in your knowledge uh, and there's not much point studying all this just to pass the exam at the end. You, you want a kind of holistic picture of, of the subject, uh, especially in medicine where a lot of things tie in together. So use it, uh, use it wisely, use it early, but also um, supplement it with reading. I think that's, that's what's really helped me. And honestly, I've, I'm excited to see how the rest of this year is gonna go. It's actually my first clinical year. Um, so I've had to change some of my study techniques uh, this year. Um, a lot of the active recall techniques that worked for me in years one and two, I've kind of had to refine as I've gone along. Um, so yeah, I'll get back to you guys in a few months time. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Medicine is honestly so much about figuring out what study methods work for you. So I really hope this helped. I'll see you in the next video.